Hi folks, I'm Hector Garcia. I'm a CPA and I have a small tax practice, actually bookkeeping and tax practice with about nine people based out of Miami, Florida. And last year I implemented a tax practice, actually a complete uh, practice management app called TaxDome. Now I initially set up TaxDome so I can manage the document gathering process from customers to prepare the tax return, put a tax return up in a client portal so the customer can electronically sign and we can have that entire process be managed in the cloud via TaxDome. Uh, creeping onto this year, we also added some uh, workflow automation. So we're using TaxDome, not just for our taxes, we're using it for our bookkeeping practice as well. So we're gathering uh, bank statements, check images, all that stuff through TaxDome and we're creating stages and we're moving uh, the stages of the bookkeeping process. So we know where every, every client is at every, any point in time. And we know which person in the organization um, is uh, tasked to do the next, uh, the next step. That way we have complete control of what's going on for both our bookkeeping and our tax clients. I've been so enamored with what TaxDome has helped us do that I felt that I think it would be valuable to create a video and show you guys how that works. So we're gonna do a full demonstration, not a full, we're gonna do a demonstration of TaxDome. We're gonna show you a couple of things. And I'm joined by Carlos. Carlos actually uh, was tasked last year with helping us implement TaxDome. And we still have him engaged, helping us implement TaxDome. He happens to be my brother as well. Um, and, uh, but this is what he does. He helps other uh, companies implement sales and productivity workflows. He took on TaxDome head on with our practice. And now this is what he does. He's my go-to tax on person. I see Carlos um, as, you know, Carlos is my tax on consultant, the way I'm my client's QuickBooks consultant. So Carlos, uh, thank you for joining me today. And I think we're gonna have a fascinating conversation. I would like to ask you first, you're not an accountant, you're, you're not in, in the field, you're more in the um, workflow automation field. What did you like about TaxDome when you started working with it a couple of years ago? Yeah, so I think, you know, we started engaging and we, we were realizing that your, as your practice was scaling and your team was growing and the customers that you were having and servicing were the needs were growing, you know, a lot of the task management and the activity management customer interaction became a little bit harder to manage. And so, you know, there were, you did have a lot of applications as, as you remember when we sat down and, and looked at your, your system um, and many of them solved a lot of issues, uh, but they had very singular feature that would solve those issues. So it also created a, a lot of extra bottlenecks for the team to, you know, rotate between one application and the other, where we found TaxDome to really be the, the most complete kind of, you know, all in one, not only CRM, client portal system, document management uh, you know, you could invoice. There are just so many features that you could do all in one specifically for tax practices. And I think that's really the, the value proposition that, that they bring to the table uh, where it allows, you know, firms like yours that are growing, continuing to scale to be able to manage uh, task management and workflows and be able to service your customers appropriately. Sure. Uh, Carlos, let's, let's open up TaxDome to have it on the screen. So people are looking at the actual software while we're talking. And we're going to do a couple of more sort of, um, uh, not introduction, but a little bit more of sort of background and context before we jump right to it. So uh, prior to implementing uh, TaxDome, and I'm going to give you the ability to share your screen here via Zoom. So give me a second. You should be able to do it now. So prior to, uh, to implementing TaxDome, we were doing a couple of things. One, we were using a combination between Dropbox, Google Drive, and whatever the customer was using to store documents, plus some documents were, some customers were sending documents via email. So we were gathering documents from multiple sources, putting them in our secure server. That was the place where we had them. Because we didn't have a portal or like a real functioning portal, every time our clients wanted to get access to an old tax return, an old bank statement, whatever it is, we went into our server, we compiled that data, maybe put it in a secure zip file, email it to our customer. We were 100% fed up with that. So we wanted to have 
not just a document management a document management app. I wanted it to be a portal that it felt like the 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 the, the initial tool to upload your documents, communicate with the tax firm, and get the same documents back ready to sign all in one place. And what attracted me about um, about uh, TaxTome, and if you want to go ahead and open up the the, the plan setting so we can just kind of give people some context in terms of the pricing, because that, that's probably the best thing to start with is what is tax on, how much does it cost, that sort of thing. Tax on basically has uh, two sides of it. Um, tax on light, which was sort of the initial reason why I looked at tax on. It's 25 bucks, really uh, very low expenditure for us. Um, that's what, $300, $300 a year. But, um, but we outgrew that and we're using Tax Dome Pro now, but just to give you some context, Tax Dome Lite does the most basic stuff. It creates uh, unlimited customer portals. It allows customers to upload documents like W-2s and bank statements or whatever. It allows the accountant to receive those documents, put them in different folders, organize them in folders that color that, um, prepare the tax return or their bookkeeping financial statements, post them into Tax Dome so they're not emailing them to the clients, the clients can go in there or our clients can go in there and approve them electronically and even electronically sign the tax returns. And if you go with, if you're a very small practice, maybe a single solo practitioner, and that's what you're looking for, tax them light will work just fine. Now we wanted to do more things than the, the light version. And, and we're going to show you sort of two demos. We're going to show you just that basic part, just the document portion. And, and Carlos will demo, you'll invite me as a user and I'll show you what it looks like on my email and kind of what the customer experience looks like. That's really important. You want to know what it looks like to your customers um, when you get a communication from TaxDome and what the portal looks like, where they upload documents and where they can electronically sign. But when we upgraded to TaxDome Pro, we added a couple more things. We added invoicing, which is really, really cool because you create the invoice in TaxDome and you link the invoice to a particular document or a tax return and you can force the customer to have to pay you prior to being able to see that document. I find that amazing. And mm -hmm. it made it so much easier to get my customers to pay because I could tell customers, look, my hands are tied. It's, it's, you gotta pay the invoice, otherwise you can't <laughs> see the tax return or whatever. So we were able to sort of offload that conversation about you gotta pay us before you reprocess the return or before you look at the return or before you look at the financial statement, whatever the work uh, product is. We like doing that, and that's optional. You don't have to block it. You can invoice it and not have to block it. But also in the same portal, the customer can see both the documents and the pending invoices. So that's neat as well. Uh, the other thing that we that we wanted about the TaxDome Pro is we wanted to white label it. So we didn't want to refer to it as TaxDome anymore with our customers. We wanted to call it the portal. So we tell customers log into the portal and and upload it to the portal. That way we sort of disassociate this specific app that we're using. Although it's not a big deal, honestly, that we, we call it TaxDome and customers know that we're using TaxDome. But you know, when you call it the portal and it's the portal and, it, and it's white labeled with your logo, it makes your firm look so much bigger and more organized because it looks like it's a custom system that was built you know, to manage our practice. Um, the other things that we, we added, and this is something that just blew our minds when we implemented it this year, is the workflow automation. So we can create, so before we used to just do it for tax returns and that's it. Now we're doing it for our bookkeeping customers, our payroll customers, our sales tax customers, and we're creating pipelines. We're creating jobs, tasks, and subtasks. And we are assigning the tasks and the subtasks to different team members based on their specialty. So we bring in a bookkeeping customer, we onboard them and we take them to the whole pipeline with different tasks and subtasks and then me as the as a CEO, as a firm owner, I can log in and see where all the jobs are and who's responsible for doing what and how much workload one particular employee has more than others. So that allows me to say, you know what, I'm gonna shift this particular task from employee A to employee B. That way I can start managing my practice and I'm working on my business, not in my business. So this is this finally I felt is giving me some freedom to to feel that I can manage my tax practice. Look. Carlos, you know, we got like 75, 80 monthly bookkeeping clients. We got 400 tax returns we do a year. It gets out of control during tax season. Um, so we got to know where everything is. So those are the things that for me were most important or are most important about TaxDome Pro. 
and that's a fifty dollar per user uh, cost. We we pay it annually. So you can, you have to do your calculation. It's not cheap. If you got four or five people, you're gonna be paying a couple hundred bucks. Um, and Carlos, there's one thing that you told me you liked about the Pro Edition a lot when we upgraded. What, what was that thing? Yeah, I just think that in, anyone that wants to you know take this on or try it, you know the the support that you get you know is has unlimited training so you know you can call up and schedule you know 30 minute or you know 20 minute zoom conversations with the support teams and from a software knowledge standpoint they will help you get really acquainted and really comfortable with the navigation of how to how to at least get started or get inspired to you know get your workflows and your automations going now for the real real advanced automation and pipeline setups that that takes hours, especially in a practice, you know, with with your size sector and folks who have practices of that size, it is a lot of hours of programming and customization and 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 being able to detail out specifically how you want the workflows and the pipelines to be automated. So, um, you know, that's a really great feature. You'll get a lot of support to help you at least get started. So, full disclosure, I've never called Taxstone for support because I have Carlos, and the reality is that. Carlos literally sat in our firm and watched us work for weeks. I mean, we had, I had the advantage that he's local, he's my brother, and, and, and we did a, like a really big contract with him so he can help us just kind of pretty much automate our, our workflows. So he was able to understand our practice and through the understanding, uh, he was able to tweak all the settings and make it work for us. And Carlos, maybe you can show him some of the things that you did for our practice, uh, sort of in the second half, show us a little bit of that pipeline workflow, that's is one thing that blew my mind. So yeah, for sure, if you're gonna implement Taxstone and you're gonna learn all the in and outs uh, by yourself uh, without the use of a consultant, having that support, I imagine is, is crucial, but you know, obviously I recommend working with Carlos or someone like Carlos to really sort of take your practice to the next level because it will save you hours. Okay, so let's back out of that. I think we've done enough introduction and sales of the app and again, I'm not trying to sell it to you. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to explain to you what our year and a half journey has been through Taxstone and give you an idea for the logic behind why we pulled the trigger, purchased this app, and, um, and made the decision to make the investment and move all my other, uh, like you said, multiple systems that all worked really well at one thing, but we, we basically um, replaced our CRM system, replaced our document management system, replaced the, the tax add-on that, that I had for the electronic signatures. And now Taxstone is all three of those. Um, and also my, our task management, a practice management system. So Carlos, let's start with maybe probably the most basic thing. Let's show people the difference between an account uh, and a contact, and yeah. then maybe invite me to be uh, a user so we can show people what it looks like for a customer to have access to the firm's portal. You got it. So. You know, as you can see on the top left, this is where you can, you know, label the the firm with your practices logo, and, and this is Exceed Sales, my firm, and you can see here uh, the little search button. So if you want to search a customer very quickly, you can type the customer name, and it'll go ahead and load it for you. You can see a few already are pre-filled, and any new type of activity or or task that you want to create, you just click on New, and then it'll it'll open up this sub menu of all of the functions that you you can use Taxstone for. So in this case, we're going to be creating a new account. Uh, and Hector, you will be our custom, our practice customer here as we create this new account. And there's a feature that we can talk about later, but these are ta tags are a very important function that allows you to program workflow automations and be able to identify, you know, mostly it could be identifiers of what kind of customer this is, um, you can use a tag to help label things like what kind of services does this customer engage in? So a lot of firms offer bookkeeping services and tax services. You know, this account could be the type of account that only does individual tax returns. So you could you can label it something like a 1040, and that'll help you later when you're filtering through hundreds and hundreds of customers who are all your 1040 customers, you could do that. You could also, if you have multiple accountants that are owning relationships, which in your case, Hector, you've got multiple partners that serve, you know, a, a book of business on one end, a book of business on the other, and we can have all of them, you know, partying together in the in the portal, 
but you know you can also break them down by saying this is a Carlos customer. And so if I want to filter all my Carlos customers that have 1040s, the tags allow me to filter them down. So I really love that feature. In this case, we're not going to set anything up. I'm going to be the only team member that, that can see this actual customer. And then the folder template is something that sets up uh, you know, some initial folders where the customer and the firm uh, mem team members can share documents with each other, whether it's you could set it up as a private function or you could set it up as a uh, shared function where both the practice members and the customers can share, delete, upload, you know, re require signatures and do some of that fun stuff. So an account is more like a profile. You asked me earlier, what's the difference between an account and a contact? And a contact is how we're going to interact with the customer. So you do have to create, even though you know your name is Hector Garcia in the account name, in this case, because you are in the individual, you're, you're the profile owner of that, your contact will be the individual that I'm going to interact with. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and again, create your information here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use the, the uh, email to help you get the experience of what it looks like when you receive an invitation. Now, I'll so, add some color commentary here. So for example, let's say Hector Garcia is the name of the profile where we're gonna do Hector Garcia's personal tax return. But let's say for example, it's a joint return and you need both Hector and Hector's wife to sign. And each signature has to come from a different account or different email. So you would have each of the spouses as a contact. It's just an example. Um, if you were doing a corporation, a business as the account, then one of the contacts could be the CEO, another one could be the CFO, another one could be an internal bookkeeper, another one could be an external third-party bookkeeper that has limited access to, to, to certain things. So you get to then control, figure out which of the contacts are going to have interaction with uh, the, the documents inside uh, that client's portal. And you can choose which of the contacts are simply just linked to the account you know, in terms of related to the account and which ones can actually log in, which is what you're about to click on that login button and invite me to uh, access the portal. Exactly. So now I'm going to send you the login, but I also want you to know whenever there's something changing in the account, you're going to get notified. And if I want to email you, from the inside tax dome and we can, we can connect, I can do that. So I'm just gonna turn on these two settings just for the benefit of time here. And once I create the account, this is what it looks like. Uh, there are additional settings as you're Hector setting up your portal on your end, I'll, I'll just uh, vamp here and share that you can also assign other individuals that can access the account or not. So really important to know if you have a firm where you have you know certain team members that you want to give certain access to certain customers and don't want to give them access to other customers, you can change the access rights here. So in this case, if I want my senior tax preparer and myself to be the only ones to have access to this because it's a tax customer, then the senior bookkeeper will not uh, have access to it. And it just helps them only work on the customers that they're familiar with and that they're responsible for. And again, you can go in here and create tags, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So Hector, are you, uh, have you already received your invite and you wanna share your yeah, client portal? Exactly, I'm gonna go ahead and reclaim the host so I can share my screen. And now what you're about to see, so what, what we're showing you now is what the customer's experience looks like, okay? So what does it look like to be a, a customer of a accounting firm, of a tax firm that uses Taxdome, that gets an invitation to access the portal. So right now I'm looking at my email. You can see my screen, right? You can see my screen here. Yes. And then there's there's an email that says, Carlos Garcia is from Exceed Sales. Is, and just imagine your firm's name there, right? Is inviting you to be part of the client portal. So I'm gonna click on that. And then the email says, hey, um, uh, Carlos Garcia is inviting you to create an account in Taxstone. So at this point, I'm gonna click on activate account. So I'm the customer saying, yes, let's, let's get started. And then I create a password. So I'm gonna go in there and create a password. And I'm the customer, again, set, setting up a password to be part of the portal. I click on submit and I click on okay. And for now the portal is blank. You're looking at the customer portal side of this process. The customer on the right-hand side 
is to see a quick button that says upload documents. I can do a new chat where maybe I want to ask a question. Um, I can go here, outstanding balance, and pay my invoices. There's uh, the address and the phone number of the firm, right? That, that, so quick, quick information to the firm's uh, contact information. On the left-hand side, I can go to documents, and this is where I would see the documents that the firm sent for me to look at, to review, to approve. If there's any electronic signatures, it would be here where it says signatures. There isn't any right now. And also there will be uh, contracts. So here under contracts, that's where you would send me the engagement letter and I would sign it electronically here. Organizers is you would, you would pick an organizer for me to then fill in the information. And then we have message and task, which is the communication. This is what I said, we need to like get off email and focus on here. So let's say I'm the customer, I just logged in and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just type here, uh, what do I do next, right? Like this typical customer, right? What do I do <laughs> next, right? Something like that and go to create chat. So that's all you see for now. And, and then for the time being, we won't switch back to, to, to the firm side, but you are gonna see that, what do, I, what do I do next message in there? But now I wanna show you what it looks like for me to upload a document so the firm can see it. So I'm gonna click on documents and uh, under documents, I'm gonna click on upload documents. And let's say I'm gonna upload, again, uh, last year's tax return and the W-2, whatever it is. So I'm gonna come in here, pick my last year's tax return and my W-2, again, just some examples. Uh, click on open and again, I'm the customer uploading documents so uh, Carlos can see them. So that's done, they're there. Carlos talked about folders a little bit earlier, saying, okay, we're gonna create default folders. Uh, by default, we set up folders on three tax years or something like that. So we can start organizing things by year, but I've seen other firms do it based on the function. So one folder could be bank statements. Another folder could be old tax returns. Another folder could be tax notices. So you organize the folders for the documents in whichever way you would like to encourage your customer to put things into. For the time being, I'm just gonna grab these two things and then I'm gonna move them into, let's say the 2021 folder and click on move. So now as a customer, I, I was able to organize it and put it where I want it. Even if the customer doesn't take that extra step to organize them, you're gonna, get, you're gonna see them in this unsorted way. And then the firm itself can move things and organize things uh, afterwards. So I'm gonna go ahead and Carlos, go ahead and take over the sharing so we can see what it looks like on your side. So now that you have created an account and you have sent me a message, then you can see that my inbox gives me two messages. And so probably because you created, you did two things on your profile. The first thing that you did was you sent me a message. And so it tells me here, here's a new message from Hector Garcia. And then the second thing is um, probably gonna talk about, <laughs> so there's your message. It says, what do I do next in the preview? So let me just go in there again. You see that it shows it right there. Um, again, and if you, I wanna interact back with you, I can go into that chat and respond over to you. I could attach documents. I could even, you know, use this and add a task, which is another function that we'll talk about in a little bit. But you this can, is- you can, give, you can give me a task, right? Right. So I can-, so let's, I can... Let's, let's try that. So um, maybe uh, message me back saying, please upload uh, the bank statements or, or something like that. Please upload all the bank statements. And then maybe on the tasks, you list the specific bank accounts. So you can put account one to three, account uh, four, five, six, or something like that. Um, or yeah, for account one to three and then credit card chase one to three or something like that. So then I, I, I want you to see what kind of, what it looks like on the, on the customer's side. So go ahead and, and, and send that. So, so now as a customer, I'm gonna see those, those tasks and I can upload the documents and also check them off as I go. But before we switch back to my screen and see that, uh, Carlos, let's go ahead and do the most common things that we do when we bring a customer in, which is let's send them an engagement letter uh, for us to sign, and then maybe an invoice for me to see that I have an invoice payment in there. Yeah, and be, before we start, you know, creating some more tasks, it's important for for you to know that you can create or you can do one of two things. You can create your own templates for any of these activities. So if you want to create a task, send an email, create a job, 
an organizer, create a folder, message, contract invoice. All of these have the ability to be customizable as a template. So we have created a few templates, but we there's also a library available of pre-made templates that you can use that Taxdom has that provides you with so that you don't have to do the manual work yourself. But in this case, we're going to go ahead and create an organizer. An organizer is like an intake form. And so I want, before I go ahead and, and take you in as a, as a customer, let's say if I'm onboarding you, then I would go ahead and select a specific organizer that I want you to send, which would be like a questionnaire, if you will, right? So I need certain taxpayer information. So in this case, I would need your name, right? I would want your social security uh, information, so on and so forth. And all of these sections, you can go ahead and, and answer. And in the template setup section, you can actually make it a required answer. So the customer cannot submit it unless they fill out that required area. In this case, uh, you know, because we're, we're in the function of sending it to you, we can't modify it. But if we were to go back to the templates, we can do that. So for the uh, benefit of time here, we won't, we won't do any of those uh, additional steps, but you can see that this is uh, all of the things that you know, a regular practice would ask the customer to get, especially if they're onboarding a brand new customer. And so then once you create that, it'll send it to you, the customer, and it will uh, pop up as a new organizer that's pending. In mm -hmm. this case, this one has 72 uh, fields uh, that are required, not required, but are being asked to be filled out, of which you can modify which of those you want them to be a required field, which means you can't submit it unless right. you put the information in the field. And I'll add something to that because a lot of my clients don't answer the organizers. Um, you can you can send them and hope that they that they answer them. But if you as a firm want to make sure that certain fields from the organizer are filled, like it, it's your minimum requirement to have certain pieces of information about the customer, uh, the the employee that has access to the firm side, we can we can, like we could call the client and just answer answer the questions over the phone and type them ourselves. So uh, obviously, ideally, the client will add all that information. But if the client doesn't do it, uh, the actual firm owner or employee in the firm could fill that out as well and mark that completed. So you got the organizer done. Let's do a contract as well. Do like an engagement right. letter. So now I want to send you an engagement letter. Again, I don't, I don't have any pending for your profile with your profile set up. So I'm going to create a new one. In this case, we're doing everything manually, uh, obviously, with automation and with pipelines. You can literally put a customer, stick them in a pipeline, and all these things can be pre-programmed to be sent. So we're doing everything manually for the benefit of just walking through what it looks like if you were want to do it as a one-off. So what do we want to call this contract? So uh, individual tax return. And you're going to pick a template that's already there. Yes. So we're going to go ahead and pick this letter of engagement, financial statement, and tax services, of which has a bunch of uh, pre-recorded. Um, we had set this up amount, in our right? settings. It yeah. had some pre-recorded rates of which can actually be modified in the in the moment. So in case you want to offer the customer some sort of discount, you can do that. But we can pre pre pick our let's say the base price that your firm would typically um, you know charge your customer. And what it would look like is you know here are some of the terms, what it looks like in terms of the contract, what it includes, what are the services, and some additional disclosures, so on and so forth. And, and once that's, that's you a template, that's a template that's already set up, which you can edit if you want to. Absolutely. You can either hype, you can also hyperlink things. You can put bold, you can, you know, change the color of the text if you want, just yep. to point out specific things of, of the letter itself. So how do we feel about this? Should we send it, Hector? Yeah, let's send it. So $800 yeah. engagement letter. And again, that, those list of services, those are customizable. You can pick whatever price, you can pick whatever quantity, you can delete them and remove them. You don't necessarily have to put a dollar amount in an engagement letter. You can do an engagement letter without a dollar amount. If you want to, I mean, it's really up to you how you want to do it. You want to add the invoice as well, Carlos, so we can sh show sure. you what that looks like. Yeah. So again, no invoices are pending for the customer. So there's nothing out there. And if I want to send you an invoice, we're going to call it a tax return invoice. Uh, the amount was $800. And we'll just call this, you know, invoice number 1001 depending on you know, how your system works there. And that will be sent over to you. 
email will be sent to the client as an invoice. And then in the description, we also pre-program to say, this is required before we can continue the work. So you can always modify that as you see fit. In this case, we're doing it um, you know, so that the customer understands what they need to do before they want to start the work with us. And so quick, now- quick, quick note here, if you have QuickBooks or another system, you don't have to use Taxdom to invoice. You can go ahead and invoice through, uh, through your own system and you can separate workflow management, contract engagement management, and invoicing, keep it on a completely different system. As I mentioned earlier, what I like about the invoicing is the customer sees it on the portal. Um, so, so, it's, so, so it could be confusing to the customer to, see, to not see a balance in the portal, but have a balance in the real world. Um, and, and of course, um, if, again, you could use your QuickBooks or your invoicing, but particularly if you wanna tie the work you're managing through Taxstone to an invoice or to a contract, I strongly uh, recommend doing the invoicing through there. It uses Stripe, um, so, so, the, so the rates are pretty competitive. And that information eventually hits your bank account and you can reconcile that easily in your accounting as well. Okay, so do we wanna switch to the portal, see what it looks like from the customer view now? Yeah, perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch back uh, and share my screen. So you should see my screen now and Right now, as we speak, notice that as a customer, I see a lot more things in my tax zone. First of all, I see that there's an outstanding balance. Again, that's a good thing. I love to tell my clients that they owe me money on the work that I'm doing, right? Um, they get to see here the list, unpaid invoice. They see contract pending signature. So when I click on contracts, I can see uh, the contract pending signature. I can click on that. There's my engagement letter. There's sort of the breakdown of what the services are. And again, you can include the services or not include services. You don't have to put a dollar amount in an engagement letter. I like doing it. Um, you could type it in the text and not have it broken down. A service is up to you. You don't have to make an engagement letter look like an invoice. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on agree on terms above. I'm gonna click on where it says, please sign here. I'll type my name. And then I click on sign and then you get electronic signature. I'm gonna go ahead and click on sign and done. That, uh, that is done, it's time stamped. Okay, that way we know and we have proof that we agree to that. When I go back into contracts, uh, it doesn't show pending anymore. There's my engagement letter, it says signed. Anytime as a customer, I wanna look at my engagement letter, there it is. That way if the customer goes back and tells you, well, I thought this was included or this wasn't included, you can say in the portal, the engagement letter is there, go ahead and read it and see if you have any questions about it. Beautiful thing, right? Here's an organizer, we talked about the organizer. So we're gonna click on organizer, it says pending. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. And then as a customer, I get to then fill out all this information. So I'll put here Hector Garcia and my spouse, Andrea Garcia, and my date of birth. Let's say it was this day and my occupation, CPA, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a bunch of things that you can do in there. Again, you can choose what you require from the person. If you require the person to upload driver's license or something like that, you create that, you add that into your organizer. So you choose what you wanna see in this organizer. Again, as a customer, if you don't, you didn't make any of these required uh, fields, then it won't force me to enter it. So I can just enter whatever I end up wanting to enter as a customer. Again, some customers are not gonna fill it out. You can do it over the phone if you want to, and you can fill it in in the tax home site. I click on submit, just kinda wanted to show you that as a customer, I went ahead and finished or submitted the organizer, whether it's incomplete or not, irrelevant, just that's what happened. Then I'm gonna go to message and tasks and then see that, I, that you reply back saying, please upload all the bank statements. So I can uh, upload it from here if I want to. And here's the, the sort of the checklist. So I can click on attach documents from my computer. I can go to add document. I can go find my bank statements, whatever they are, again, I'll just, Keep uploading the same document as an example i click on open and i click on upload and it says as a customer i uploaded everything i was supposed to and there's that checklist that you gave me right just a quick reminder of what i'm supposed to be checking so you know on your side that i'm done now can the customer upload the wrong thing or incomplete things yeah that happens all the time but at least you gave them a, a, a quick checklist there so i find that to be really um, cool as well and then here on the invoice this is where you get to see um, the invoice and at this point, as a customer, I can do one or two things. I can go to pay invoices and choose what invoices I wanna pay, assuming there's multiple, or I can make a prepayment. So you can even 
instruct your client to tell them, hey, there's not going to be an invoice until we complete the invoice, I mean, until we complete the work, but I need you to go back and uh, give me a prepayment of 500, 1,000, whatever you can give them the instructions. And before you get the prepayment, maybe that's when you decide to, to do the work. Again, these internal company policies, you will decide how you would do it. So the customer just puts a credit card information there and done. So you can make a prepayment or pay uh, an invoice. And that's the customer's portal in a nutshell. So Carlos, I'm going to switch it back to you. And what I want you to show me is sort of the next thing that we do, which is we upload a tax return and have us approve it and then upload a form for an e-signature and have us electronically sign it. So let me go ahead and give you um, access now. Okay, Carlos, I see your screen now. Okay. So as you were saying, you know, we've got the customer who has uploaded uh, some of those documents in the client uploaded document section. And so in this, let's say this PDF, I could actually do certain functions and you can see that uh, one of the ones that I like is you can seal a document. And so sealing the document doesn't allow the customer, even though it's a shared folder. But what you've done is you have prevented the customer from modifying the specific document, especially if you're working on it. Um, you know, Hector, maybe you can share more, you know, how you see the value of sealing a document the way that you well, would use it. Yeah. So, so the customer could upload a document, then delete it and try to replace it with a newer version of it. Uh, they could delete the same tax return that we uploaded. Again, the, the idea behind sealing it is like, okay, Mr. Customer, that document is set in stone. It's part of the permanent record. You can't touch it anymore. And that's, that sealing concept is really mostly for the client uploaded documents because the client can only modify and delete transactions in that section. Uh, the, the next uh, subsection that says firm docs shared with client, that's where you're going to upload the tax return for me to sign or to approve, uh, that sort of thing. So um, go ahead and upload a document for me to approve. So I'm going to just move this one over into the firm docs share with so we're client. Gonna assume that's, we're going to assume that's the actual return that you just did, that you just prepared. Right. And so the difference is that if you look at this little I button, it says clients can only view this folder. And this other, this other little icon says client can view and edit this folder. It just, again, just a different type of access and restrictions that they could have. But in the view only uh, function, a new feature comes along, which is to request a signature. So. The way that uh, Taxdom has set it up by default, this is the default folder template. Any firm doc shared with the client are the ones that you are able to request signature, but you could always change those settings in any way you want, but in the way that the default is set up. So in this case, uh, I am going to request a signature and what we will do is it will open the document and inside the document, the application of placing signatures. And so I either choose whether it's going to be me. So in this case, if I'm the CPA that is going to sign in one of the portions of the tax return, or if it's going to be the customer. So in this case, it would be you, Hector. And so if I want to put a signature here for you to sign and a date here, and uh, it does say title here, I could put a text, right? Yeah. So you, you can put that your, your title there. It'll set it up so that you can, um, you know, when you, once you receive the document, it's going to do that. Um, there's also a feature here. Not sure if you want to talk about it, Hector. The the additional know your customer feature is is it is at an extra cost. Um, something that they can do if they want to do enhanced due diligence, if you will, before submitting a tax return. Um, but we're so, not going yeah, to. So yeah. I'll, I'll talk about it briefly. So the IRS requires um, the, the KBA requires a, a a sort of a system in place to verify that the person that's signing is the person that's signing. So Taxdom has an optional feature and it's like an extra dollar. I forget what the exact dollar amount is. That's why it says firm balance there. Um, uh, an extra dollar there for the customer, for the customer to sign and use the extra security features for the signature. So it's up to you whether you want to use it, especially if you're doing electronic filing from the signatures. That's something that you might want to consider. Yeah. And signatures can also be programmed in the form of a template. We don't have one set up. This is a simple and easy function. So I'm going ahead and send that to you. And in this case, it would be uh, a blank ti uh, says title. So this is a blank uh, text and it's yep. just going to be the same as title. And 
Okay, and so now that I've sent that over to you, let's go ahead and see what it looks like from the client side. Okay, so now you should be seeing my screen. I'm the client. There's a document pending here. When you see documents, I'm gonna click on that. And then it should say here, signature, here on the top. It says signature. I can also click on where it says, firm docs shared with client. And I can see it through the folder as well. Notice it says pending e-signature. And from here, I can click on the three little dots and download it, print it, or share it with the third party. But the process to, to sign the e-signature is to click here, it says signatures in the top, and then find all the documents that are pending signature, click on it. And then now as a customer, I can come in here and I can click where it says my signature, similar to the contract process. And I click on insert. And then the date is based on the date that I signed it. And then here under title, that's where I can put uh, precedent or whatever it happens to be. Click on insert and I get to fill that information there and then click on uh, finish. And that's me electronically signing the tax return. That's without the KBA. KBA is an, is an, an extra step that the customer will have, but that's the entire process. So when we go back into documents and we go into firm docs share with client, I look at 2021, there's my tax return and there's the tag that says sign. So I can view it if I want to. So let's say if I just click on it and view it and I, now I should see in my permanent record, a tax return with an electronic signature. Okay. And I'll go back here for a second. And one thing that we kind of skipped over, but it's really, really valuable. It says saved me a lot of time is as a customer, I need to send my banker, my mortgage lender, my other consultant, my lawyer or whatever. I need to send them a copy of the tax return. So most people, what they would do is they will click on download and then download it in the computer and throw it in an email. Problem is that's really unsecure. So one of the cool thing to tax on those is I can click on share and I can send this to another third party. And I can say, look for to this third party. And I can say, that person has until the 31st to look at it. And then I click on send. And now this other third party will get an email. And now they will have a third party portal into uh, TaxDome. And they'll be able to see all their customers, or all your customers in TaxDome that had shared it to them. And they'll be able to see just those documents they share with them, limited with a link expiration. So they can also, in a secure way, share those documents with, uh, with some third party. So that takes you as an accountant out of the loop and it saves me a lot of time because I don't have to sit there and send stuff to a bank or whatever it happens to be. Carlos, I'm going to share, I'm going to uh, stop sharing so you can share one more time. One thing I do want to, I want to show, have people show you is uh, go ahead and upload another document and have it um, approved so we can see the approval process as well. Um, so we can upload another document. So if you go into docs and, uh, and upload a document, and, and we'll also tie an invoice to that um, as well. So if you can just take any document, any document from your computer and upload it uh, to the firm docs shared file. Okay, and so I'm going to put a firm doc shared 2021, and we're gonna request a client approval. And also do a, do a link invoice. Actually, just do that, just do that. We'll do the link, on, link, link invoice to show that as well, because that's actually a pretty neat, uh, neat part of it. So let me share my screen now, and I'm gonna refresh the page, and then we are looking at the document approval. There's documents, you're gonna see up there where it says pending approval now. I click on pending approval, and this could be for anything, like you literally just send me a logo, but whatever <laughs> it is, you can, you can grab it, um, the customer looks at it, and then they can put I approve or disapprove. And in the normal world, it would be a financial statement. It would be uh, maybe another contract. Maybe it would be a pro forma, you know, balance sheet, or it could be a tax return. It could be anything you want the customer to communicate with you. We're good to go. Uh, maybe you're going to send them a copy of the, of, of the void check that you have on records and you want the customer to double check. That's correct. Whatever it is, I can approve or disapprove and you can have an electronic uh, signature per se on documents that have been fully approved. Now I want you to, I'm going to um, stop sharing the screen so you can share it now. I want you to upload another document and I want you to do the approval and also link it to an invoice. Okay. It's one of my sure. favorite features, <laughs> as a matter of fact. Okay, so here we go. Let's do, uh, 
So re request approval, and then we're going to link the invoice, which will be this one. Yep. That's what we've already uh, completed. So I've up uploaded that. And then I'll switch over to my screen. So same exact thing. I'm on the, on the, on the customer portal. There's a new document there for me to see, um, and you're asking me to approve it. So I'm going to now try to open it. Okay, and it tells you you can't open it because it's pending payment. So I love that's like literally to be honest with you, a year and a half ago when we brought Taxdom into our practice, that was the one issue I was having. Is you know as a, as a policy, we wanted customers to pay the tax return before we e-file, and it was dual process. We send the tax return, send the invoice, and we were double checking the customer pay before we e-file. So we just changed it and said, you know what? You're gonna pay us before you get to the e-file part. So on the on the on the tax return, we get people to approve it first. It looks good. Before they can sign it, they have to pay. And that's really, really reduced our, our accounts receivable. We spoke to our clients, we told them that's the, the process. And because it's all systematic, it's not you know the evil tax firm you know, making customers pay, it's we're using a system, we're organized and people really buy into that process. So I love the fact that you can stop somebody from looking at a document prior to them paying, probably my favorite feature. So Carlos, yeah. um, I think that's it for the sort of the basic document sharing yep. portion of, of uh, TaxDome. Could you now, we're, we're gonna switch over to workflow. Yep. I'll kind of let you speak because this is really your domain, because this is the part where we, when we brought you in, right. is talk to us about typical workflow uh, for a job like a tax return and what that looks like in tax dome. Yeah, so I, first, you know, in the workflow is important to understand some of the terminology. So you'll see on the top part of the menu here that you've got tasks, jobs, and pipelines. So it's important to kind of understand the difference between them because it can be very confusing uh, if you're looking at this for the first time. So a workflow is something that you can program where if you have a lot of repetitive uh, tasks and work that you're doing for a customer, such as monthly bookkeeping or you know monthly sales tax, because you can also you know integrate work, your your bookkeeping services into the workflow here as well as tax. But if you're doing annual tax returns and you're doing individual jobs, even though you may have one customer, but that one customer might have, you know, three different corporations and then a joint individual tax return, it can get pretty clunky if you don't divide out the jobs appropriately. So the, the pipeline give you an idea to, if you know that every 1120 follows the same step, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you can create a specific 1120 pipeline in this scenario. And in that pipeline, you create stages. So the pipeline is basically your high level of, you know, how you're managing every milestone in which you're taking a job. A job is the function or the service that you are doing for that customer at that period of time. So a job could be a monthly bookkeeping service. That job repeats every month. Annual tax returns, that job re repeats every year, so on and so forth, right? So a pipeline is your overview stages, mile, and helps you know what stages each of the jobs are going through. The job is what you stick inside the pipeline. And then the tasks are the things that you need to do to move the job forward from stage one, two, three, four, five. So it sounds like a lot, uh, but what I will say is that if we're going to add a job, for example, into this workflow, um, it's not like you just open, you create a pipeline and everything works magically. A pipeline does have to be created. There are some templates out there, but when you are editing the pipeline, you can manually create the stages that you want. You can you can label them, you know, whatever you want it to be called. In this case, we're using one that is pre-made for us uh, from the library. And this is sort of a, a common, what a common 1120 pipeline would look, at, look like, you know, from the stage of client interview or onboarding to the preparation, review, so on and so forth. And in each of the stages, you can program it to auto move once it tasks are completed inside that stage, depending on what, what specific tasks or what specific functions you programmed it to do. So in this case, for the client, for the stage of client onboarding, once you add the job to it, the first thing that's going to happen that it's programmed to do is for the customer to receive a welcome email 
welcoming them to the portal and teach and letting them know how they would register to have a tax zone profile. Then the contract that you and I already did manually would automatically be sent to them, right? And then you can modify the, you know, the, the price and all that good stuff or use the template of with the right price that you need to make sure that you're using it to whatever customer's um, you know, rate is going to be for that job. And then the organizer is there already set up in this case, and you can even program it to create certain tags. So it gets it can it gets really intricate. There's a lot of programming involved for it to be to work exactly as you want it to. But each stage, you can customize it as you want to to send an email once uh, the the job has moved from one stage to the other. So for example, once the customer has already filled out the organizer, once the letter of engagement has been signed, and once they register their their login information into the portal then technically all of these tasks would have been completed and it would naturally move into the preparation stage. And at that point, an email saying, hey, now your tax return is in preparation mode and a few tasks get, get prepared. So let me just pause here for a second, see if you want to add anything, Hector. Just want to bring some context. On the first half of the demonstration, we show you how we added a client and we manually said, sign the contract. We manually said, send me some documents. We manually said, um, fill this organizer, right? The way you're doing it is because we're assuming that we're not dealing with two or three clients per year, we're dealing with hundreds of clients per year or a large volume. You're saying, look, we got a large, larger chunk of clients that all look the same, like 11, 20 clients or monthly bookkeeping clients, whatever it is. So you create all these tasks such as send the customer the reminder to do this, send the customer the contract, send the customer the organizer. Uh, we pre-program it. So when you're in that stage, Taxdom does it all for you automatically. And then there will be many stages that don't require any customer interaction at all. So for example, in prep process, all we did with the customer is email them to, to let them know, hey, we're working on it. That way they you know, sort of calm down. And then you have these two tasks like, you know, make sure all the documents are received, prepare the return. The customer doesn't do any interaction at that point. Okay, and then move out, move to the next one in review. And again, these are this is totally customizable. So notice that um, automatically as it moves down the pipeline, moves down the workflow, the email gets an update saying, we prepare your tax return, our CPA is looking at it, or our, our partner is looking at it again. So the, to reduce the amount of phone calls the customer get, sends you or email you saying, where's my tax return, where's my tax return? You know, because it's moving down the pipeline. So, so now you're automating, letting the customer know, hey, it's moving, it's moving. It's getting closer to it. But then we get back to customer interaction. So if you click on the draft um, invoice sent, notice that at this point we are sending to the client saying, hey, the draft is, pen the draft is ready, invoice is pending. And then the task to the tax dome user is to, what you did, grab the PDF from your tax software, upload it and request a signature. Or one thing that's really cool, um, certain tax app, tax softwares, it's available, it's compatible with TaxDome where you can print from the tax software straight into TaxDome. So it just basically saves you the uploading the file. And at that point, you have some tasks that require the customer to work. So for example, 8879C, that would be the customer now needs to um, uh, uh, sign it. So. The template is with letting the client know, hey, there's a document sitting in your in your in your tax dome, and also the tax dome user has to add that signature request. And then once that's done, then all this stuff maybe it's all firm side, and the customer doesn't need to do anything other than receive emails letting them know what's happening with the return. Yeah. So what's important here is you know depending on how your firm is set up, is understanding you know the. The, the the real workflow, all the steps that, that are needed and the way that your firm uh, naturally does things. But if you adopt some of the, the, the pipeline templates that are created for you, it can definitely elevate, you know, the customer experience because the customer is constantly being known in the loop of what's going on. Now, this is the setup, the editing piece from a team member standpoint. Let's say I'm a senior tax preparer and I wanted to know what's happening with my jobs at all points. I wouldn't be seeing it from that screen. What I would do is I would be seeing it from this view. 
And so this is where it tells me all, all of all of the jobs that I've got. In this case, since we don't have too many customer examples, we're going to go ahead and grab you, Hector. Uh, even though it says individual tax, let's just say that this is going to be a 1120 job. As a matter of fact, let me just say company A is an 1120. And so there, again, templates are important. So when you set up templates, in this case, we have pre-made a 2021 1120 tax return job for the uh, sake of this example. And then I'm going to assign this to the individuals that are going to be uh, responsible for completing tasks in order to move this job throughout the pipeline. And so the moment that I add the job, this job card will exist and the automations will notify me, hey, these are the automations that are going to be triggered. Um, these tags will be created. The customer will receive this email. The customer will receive this contract. Are you ready to move it into that, right? And in this case, it's been defaulted for me to be the assign assignee, but let's say I want my senior tax preparer to be the one responsible for stage one. So I could go ahead and change that and give it to him or her. So at this point, what will happen is this is the job card that will appear in the pipeline. And so if I've got you know, multiple 1120 jobs, they will all show up here and now where I can scroll up and down. And then as I move through my jobs window, I can also look at what pending jobs I have and I can filter it by pipeline. So if I have a 1040 pipeline, if I have a 1065 slash 1120S pipeline, so on and forth, you know, I can filter down what, where they are and what stages and who are the team members to see if they are, you know, what, where they are doing and then under jobs. So the job, the job itself is important to understand. The job itself is a finished product. So a finished product could be a tax return or it could be a particular month of, of bookkeeping for a particular customer. It could be a, a complete bookkeeping cleanup job for a particular customer. So the way, typically the way you invoice your clients it's, it's how you uh, call jobs. So essentially all your jobs, regardless of whether they're in a workflow pipeline or not, they're gonna show up in here. So that lets you know what work is pending. Where the pipeline is different is it lets you know uh, where in the stage of the job completion each of the particular jobs are. So jobs are gonna be all the, all the finished work that you have pending to do with your customer, uh, and pipeline is where each of those jobs land. And then we have tasks. Maybe you can explain tasks. Yeah. And one, one quick thing as we're still on the job screen is that once you complete the job, you know, and, and it's 100% completed, you can archive it. And when you archive it, you can look at all your previously completed jobs. So in case the customer wants to see, hey, when you did my tax returns last year, so on and so forth, you can go to your archive and see the history of what were steps that were taken, maybe comments that were made or you know, documents missing, so on and so forth. That works really well, especially with bookkeeping. So in tasks, what happens is because we created a job, you know, this initial task was created, in which has no status. In order for this task to be cleared, I, the designated you know, individual responsible for completion of this task would have to change this to complete. Otherwise, it will stay pending as an open task. And in order for that senior tax preparer who is assigned to this, wants to know what are their responsibilities inside the task, then they would actually click on the task and it will tell them what they need to do, which in this case would say verify the organizer and the engagement contract. So if that's been completed, the senior tax preparer that is assigned to that task can now click on complete it, save it. And once that happens, we, if we go back into the pipeline itself, we're going to go ahead and take a look at what else needs to happen. So in this case, the customer is going to receive these, but because the customer has not filled them out, it's not going to move auto move the job to the next stage. But for the benefit of seeing the flow of it, let's assume that these were not necessary. So we're going to remove them so that we can see the natural auto move happen. So I remove those so that the task is show completed. And then if I refresh my pipeline, then you should see the job card automatically move to the next stage once this is completed. Perfect. There you go. And, and you, you said if, so there could be some requirements for it to move to the next stage, such as you got to sign the contract, you got to fill out the organizer. In this example, you deleted them. So, so it's not holding you back, uh, but you could also go into those tasks and mark them completed. As I mentioned earlier, you can fill in the organizer yourself and mark it completed. Right. 
Um, yeah, the contract, like I think that as, as a firm policy, you probably should have clients sign the contract, but maybe they already had a contract signed from before. So you can just get rid of that. And maybe you can upload the old signed contract from before. So you're not forced to have to follow every step from your template. You can pick and choose what customers don't get to do particular tasks within, within that job. You got it. So we, I think we got the hang of pipeline jobs and tasks. Every time that that stage moves to the next milestone, the new tasks for the, for the next you know, stage are created. And of course, again, if you don't have this program the right way, it's going to assign it to whatever default setup the template has. But in this case, I, I didn't see an assignee to these tasks. So I'm gonna give them again to my senior tax preparer. And unless the senior tax preparer you know, does not mark these as completed tasks, which in this case, we're just, we're, we're just completing them so you can naturally see the flow of the stages being moved once the tasks are completed. So it's one important. Thing, sorry, mm -hmm. one thing is important to add. You are the firm owner, you're the master admin of, of, uh, of the tax dome account. You get to see everybody's tasks because that's your view. But when the individual employees log in, they won't see other people's tasks, they only see their tasks, right? So that's an important piece because um, it, 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 if, you, if you're thinking that this could be confusing to one of the employees in your firm, because they're gonna see all these things, they're only gonna see their step. And it's not gonna move to the next person, assuming you got multiple people working on something until a different, uh, until the one employee finishes what they're supposed to do and it moves to the next one. You as a firm owner, the manager, you can reassign tasks or you can mark them completed yourself so you can move things down the line yourself. And it's vital that it's in the templates. That's why it's, it's a lot of investment in the setup, you know, for right. everything to flow naturally. And so it's going into each individual template to assign it the way that you envision your practice, you know, so roles and responsibilities, understanding everyone's role, you know, breakdown of, of every task in each job, you know, how the customer is going to be communicated throughout and then who's responsible for what functionality for that pipeline to move. Uh, smoothly. I know that for your firm, Hector, you've got different hands, um, you know, ma managing the stages and milestones of the tax returns because you guys have different roles. Uh, you have some senior uh, accountants that, you know, are responsible for stage one. And then once, once that's done, it gets handed off to you or your senior tax preparer in stage two. And then it goes back to them in stage three and so on and so forth. So I think this is going to work really smoothly for you guys because yeah, yeah, of course. before this, uh, it was a lot of other use of tax dome, but it was a lot of manual work where right. this is now automated for you. Yeah, it took, I mean, to full disclosure, it took us about two months of playing with this. We had a couple of sample tax dome files that we played with and went back and forth and we, we got our system um, uh, in place. And I'll give you some background if you're sort of interested in how, how we function in our firm and what we did with, with Taxome is first of all, we have every, let's call it every tax return, corporate tax return that does also contain some bookkeeping element, which is either revising the client work, looking into QuickBooks and making some adjustments or doing the entire year's worth of bookkeeping or moving from a monthly bookkeeping client into tax return. Our first step is to make sure the PL and the balance sheet is ready. So we made that the first, that's the very first thing, right? So PL balance sheet ready. Inside PL balance sheet ready, we assign the task of uh, requesting it from the client if the client does it on their own, scheduling an appointment with our QuickBooks consultant so they can look at QuickBooks. If it's QuickBooks Online, we put in a task that says senior consultant logs into QuickBooks Online, looks at it, and makes the adjustments. And in that task, invoice the customer for those adjustments because that's how we work. Then once that senior consultant, uh, accountant that deals with the customer directly has the P&L and balance sheet ready, the next step is to send it to the cu customer for approval. So that's the next stage. So it's called customer approval of P&L and balance sheet. Customer gets an email letting them know they, they sign or approve that P&L and balance sheet. Once they do that, then it moves to the next stage, which is our tax preparer. So we have a tax preparer that's an enrolled agent in our firm, that's not me, that, that does the work. So the tax preparer comes in there, uh, fills out the tax return in the tax software. Then they send it to me for review, for final review. 
Then it goes to the next stage, which is a CPA review. Then I get it on CPA review. I review it. I approve it. I make adjustments to it. And then I send it back to the senior accountant managing the customers, which is um, for them to approve the return with the customer. So that goes to the next stage. So the customer gets a copy of the tax return. They approve it. They, ag they agree to move forward. Uh, then it goes to the next stage, which is collect payment information and sign the 8879. So then the senior consultant makes sure that they have their uh, payment information from the client that they upload it into the tax loan portal. They put the, the tax return on the client so they can electronically sign it and send them invoice. Once all these things are done, then it goes back to me, which is to look at the signed return, make sure the payment information is complete, the return is signed in the right place, which there's no really no miss with this electronic system. And then I send it back to the person that manages my, my tax software so they can e-file it. So it goes to that stage. Once they e-file it, they download the e-file confirmation and the e-file copy of the return posted into the very last stage, which is e-file accepted and all the documents are in the portal. That's how we designed it in our firm. We have four different people potentially touching uh, an entirely uh, books to tax e-file workflow. And, and that's kind of, so it's a little bit similar. And what you're seeing here, this is the template. We used the temp this template and we modified it and we made it match to our needs. So the reality is as a firm, you can grab the template and adapt your workflow to the template. Or you can go back and say, you know what? There's this little different thing that we do, and we're gonna get rid of one of these stages, create an additional stage, assign the right people. Like you said, the setup is really important. You gotta make sure you understand which task gets assigned to each person. That way, when we see the workflow, we know that that person is getting notification that they gotta go to the next stage. So we actually yeah. were in love with this part of Taxome, and Carlos did a great job at yeah. setting Thanks. that up for us. I think the biggest learning has been is that there might be a lot of people out there that have tax dome and they're probably using it and it's working really well for them. But just like, you know, with your firm where you were using it for certain functionalities. And then when we finally uncovered that there were a couple of things that we could do to truly maximize and they, there was a there, we needed to sort of reconfigure the entire piece of the tax dome. So one, one example is uh, as, a, as a limitation um, is that, you know, you might have one customer relationship and inside that profile, you might have five or six different tax returns that you're doing for that one customer. And we needed to split those up into separate profiles so that each job can be easily, you know, distinguishable in each respective pipeline. And so there, there's a lot of nuances that go into making this work. If you want the workflow and the automation to work, there, there's a lot of setup, a lot of hours that need to be put in with tags, conditions, automation, so on and so forth. So I think we learned a lot doing it and we're excited about launching this year, uh, you know, to for your practice. Do you, Carlos, you recommend, like somebody's watching this video and they're at this point, they've watched this entire thing and they're like, <laughs> okay, I think I love this, but it feels a little bit intimidating. What, what do you recommend? Let's say they're not gonna work with a consultant, they're gonna implement this on their own. What would you uh, recommend? that they do prior to getting tax them, when they get tax them, how do they maximize it? Do you think that my approach, which is using it for the document management feature and the e-signature first, getting really acquainted to it, getting everybody in the firm acquainted, and then using the workflow afterwards, it's a good, it's a good process? Or do you recommend just going all in, biting the bullet and doing the whole thing uh, because it's just easier to train once and, or cry once and and uh and be happy later what, what would you recommend to, to a small tax firm that's uh you know maybe a limited budget or or they're not really sure which way to go but they're looking at this and they're they're interested in working with tax them so far yeah the first thing i would do is sign up for the the pro plan uh because it's going to have all the features that you want uh and you can get again unlimited support with with onboarding and with training you know again if you're in a low budget and you kind of want to figure it out on your own best way to do that, I would say. To, to your point about, you know, what features they should use it for, that all depends on the pri the priorities of the firm owner. Um, I think the functions that you shared, I mean, are great for managing receivables and for, you know, setting upfront contracts for customers to not proceed with work unless you get paid. I think that's a excellent strategy. So I would recommend the same, you know, strategy for for those firms. And then for those who just don't 
don't have the time, don't have the capacity, especially during tax season and, and you need help, you know, I would say, you know, work with a workflow consultant, you know, myself, I, I provide, you know, some complimentary reviews. So if you want to, you know, share your screen and, and show me your setup and I can give you some preliminary guidance. And then if you feel like, you know, you, this needs to be some project work and then we can, we can look into that further, but obviously that investment is going to have years and years and labor hours uh, of savings, um, you know, and, and a lot of headaches <laughs> that uh, right, that, are, that right. can get avoided. And, and you you told me that one of your your personal projects for this year is to build a YouTube channel like mine for all about workflow automation. So I will put a link in the in the description to maybe Carlos's email so you can contact him if you have any questions about it. Um, even if you don't want to hire Carlos, I'm, I'm sure Carlos could point you to the right direction, the right resource. That's Happy available because Carlos is a lot like me that likes to help people um, kind of learn on their own. Uh, and I'll also put a link to your YouTube channel, which should at some point during 2022 have a lot of content on on tax home, correct? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's like your channel yet, but, you know, that's, that's <laughs> the dream is to be like Hector Garcia. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Carlos, maybe you stop sharing your screen so we do the outro. And um, so if you watch this video so far, I uh, hope that you liked Taxdom. Taxdom not, is not the only um, practice management software out there. There's tons of other. There's Carbon, there's uh, Aero Workflow, there's Monday.com, uh, there's Jetpack Workflow. I, I've, these are only the four that come to mind that I've tried myself and they're all great. I think every single one I've used is great. As long as you use something, and every person in your firm has bought into it. And if, it's, if there's a client portal component that your client has bought into it, because if your client is not uploading documents, interacting with using the e-signature, using the features that save you time, then you're really not really encouraged to use it. So those things are really important is you gotta, you gotta be all in, you gotta buy into it. You gotta convince your employees and your customers to buy into it, no matter which one you use. Again, the reason why I picked Tax Dome is because I wanted to have a place to upload a tax return, get an electronic signature, force the customer to pay me upfront prior to <laughs> signing the return. That was my selfish reason for getting it. And then when we got Cardo's involved, we realized that there's this like nar like this closet of Narnia of possibilities that it can do. And then we went in there and started tweaking with the workflow. That's when I said, you know, why does a video about this? not exist. And so Carlos has helped me put it together. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, again, I'll put a link to Tax Dome in the bottom. I'll put a link to uh, Carlos's contact information in the bottom. And if you think that more content like this will be useful, go in the comments, let us know what you think and uh, like and subscribe like always. Thank you, Carlos. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Bye-bye.